Good evening, everyone. We're here for our special Wednesday evening service that we entitled We Give Thanks. And I'm going to start off by giving thanks to practitioner Debbie Wiley. Um, she's one of our remote practitioners uh, in Florida who's been supporting us on Ministry of Prayer and other ways remotely for years. She, as she sent out the prayer requests last night, she included a quote from one of my favorite books that I have gone back to many, many times and reread, sometimes all the way through, sometimes portions of it, um, Sabbath by Reverend Wayne Muller. And she offered this quote. Meister Eckhart, the Christian mystic, asserted if the only prayer we ever prayed our whole life was thank you, that would be enough. Gratefulness cultivates a visceral experience of having enough. When we're mindful of what we have and give thanks for the many gifts we have overlooked or forgotten, our sense of wealth cannot help but expand, and we soon achieve a sense of sufficiency that we so desire. Practice thanksgiving before meals, upon rising, when going to sleep, as Diane suggested. Friends, family, food, color, fragrance, the earth, life itself, these are all gifts, perfectly gratuitous. How can we not give thanks? You know, in the science of mind, we keep professing that the more we sense God's presence as our true nature, the more we sense God's presence within and around us, the more we experience God's nature in our lives. And, you know, admittedly, it is really easy to get distracted by conditions in the world that don't reflect God's nature. And, um, you know, that's a byproduct of us not having fully awakened to our divine nature, that we can create conditions that don't reflect love, joy, wholeness, abundance. But no matter what might be happening out there in the world that doesn't look in alignment with God's nature, the truth is there is so much more good happening than there is negativity. You just take the miracle of every breath that you take recreating life within you, something that no scientist on this planet, no number of scientists coming together could ever recreate. Just that one thing. If we just looked at how much good there was, um, we would experience more goodness. And you know, gratitude is an expression of love. And what do we say is the core nature of God? But love. So whenever we're experiencing gratitude, we're actually saying that I love this, I love this activity, I love this person, I'm grateful for whatever that means, I love whatever it is we're giving thanks for. And so practicing gratitude regularly keeps us aligned with that vibration of love within us. It gives it a sense of its goodness being there all the time that we can call forth to meet any human situation that we might find challenging. And I think it's you know, wonderful that you'll hear us very often uh, suggesting that people keep a gratitude journal. And it's great to review at the end of the day before you fall asleep many of the things that you're grateful for. Because you know, that's the last thing you put into your consciousness, into your subjective mind. But you know, I've realized over the years that, yes, absolutely, give thanks for all the wonderful manifestations in your life, your health, your home, your relationships, etc. But let's remember that any good in the world comes from the goodness of God from within us. So I think it's really important to recognize that any good that we experience comes from God's nature. And I think it's beneficial for us to give thanks for those God qualities that lie within us and our ability 
to experience love, our ability to experience joy. That's God's love. That's God's joy. That's God's abundance that we're experiencing. And so this evening, as we've done in the past, we usually would have uh, people from the congregation just come up if they wanted to um, share some gratitude. And um, this being you know, times when we have to limit the number of people we have, it was very difficult for me to know who to reach out to, to just have a few people coming here to share. I actually thought about the people that attend services regularly or practitioners who have service, and I pulled uh, names out of a hat. Literally, I got a hat. <laughs> and I put names, and I pulled names out of a hat. And so you will be hearing from some of the um, fellow congregants and uh, a practitioner. We have Gary Graham with us this evening, who's going to share that uh, you may not have seen in a while. And so what we're going to share is observations of what we feel happens when we experience gratitude, um, and then the things that we're grateful for in our lives and the qualities of God that we are grateful for. So I will just briefly share that first. I am so grateful for my life with my partner, Joe, our home, our pets, Chloe and Puffin, all our friends, our, um, all our family, our health in these times. And I really want to express my gratitude for all those in this community, the Blair and Alex Thompsons, the Adams, the Dean Regans, the whole Zoom team, the Facebook Live team, our staff, Terry, Doreen, the, and of course, Dr. Mark, um, looking, there's so many people, I could spend the whole evening naming names, but that collaboration that we've experienced together during these times to continue these services, it's just been such a joy. And I give thanks for God's compassion, God's playfulness, God's humor, and that vibration of love and collaboration expressing through me. And I'm so grateful that God is gracious. And I will now let you hear from our congregant, Andrea Silberman. My observations of what happens when I practice gratitude. I have a sense of balance that uh, really puts me in perspective, uh, keeps me in the moment. Uh, I feel a sense of peace that relaxes my body from within and really helps it reach the homeostasis and things that keep it running so beautifully. I feel a sense of love and live a sense of love. This is really a purpose that I chose in one of the classes that I took here. Um, I feel a sense of joy, um, a sense of wholeness, of fulfillment, of satisfaction, a sense of oneness with everything, everybody, uh, the rocks, the trees, the birds, my cats. I am grateful for spirit expressing in my life as my church family. I've been aware since Reverend Mark asked me to say these words that there are half a dozen people from the congregation that truly have become family to me that I see almost weekly. Um, first was Mary Bullard. Her wisdom was such an expression of God and her maternal nurturing for me was um, wonderful guidance in my life. My friend Leon, we get together. I'll talk, be talking with him after his church uh, tonight. I dro drove him to services um, on Wednesdays always, and we would get together to talk for an hour or more often, <laughs> discussing the sermon and trying to think God's thoughts, trying to explore the difference between mind and brain, to really um, explore that 
intelligence that is so divine. Uh, my friend Anne has become a big sister to me. She's so nurturing. She's taken me under her angel wing, and uh, we share meals, and uh, she's gotten me to do better with my appearance, uh, just like a good big sister, such benevolence and fun. We play games together, and it's great. It's a challenge, and it's, it's fun. It's fun. My friend Amy is in the PEO club that Mary Bullard invited us to join. She is the Zoom queen. She has made it so that uh, the members, there are 17 members, and our average age is 79.9 years, but we get to see each other. We have the opportunity almost weekly on Zoom because of Amy and her techno wisdom. I'm so grateful. Uh, twice a week, I walk with Sam and Gary and Steve, and it is such a joy. It is so lively and full of life and so full of fun. I'm grateful for spirit expressing through me as love, as compassion, as law. I tend to be a pretty self-disciplined person, and it's a sense of reverence for everything that I interact with, um, feeling the oneness. I am grateful. God is gracious. Thank you, Andrea. And now we'll hear from Gary Graham. Hi, I'm Gary. And if you didn't know this, there are 139 begats in the Bible. In Genesis 4.18, Unto Enoch was born Erad. Erad begat Mahujiel. Mahujiel begat Methusiel, and so on and so on. Gratitude is the same thing. It is a spiritual begat machine. Because if I start practicing gratitude, if I remember to be grateful that I got up this morning, I was able to get out of my own bed. I opened my eyes. My arms, my legs work. I can hear the birds greeting the dawn. These are very simple things to be grateful for, and as I practice this gratitude, the universe gives me more to be grateful for. And I have experienced this in my life over and over and over. Um, all five physical senses I still have. Some of my friends don't. Um, my mental faculties are in good shape, which is open to debate from some of my friends. <laughs> I have the ability to ride my bike many, many miles without having to stop and rest. Um, I am absolutely grateful for the ability to have a body that still works because people my own age don't necessarily have that. So there's so much to be grateful for. I'm driving down the street. I'm in a brand new car. That's the first new car I've had in 36 years. Um, it reminds me to be grateful that the car is registered. I don't have to worry about being pulled over. <laughs> I have a tank full of gas. Um, I know where I'm going. And just there's so much to be grateful for. And it starts with, I have a toothbrush because I still have teeth. I have shoes because I still have feet. Um, a couple of my friends that are no longer here anymore, they did not have those things before they left this plane. So there is, there's just lots of little stuff. I sleep in a bed. That wasn't always the case. I have a roof over my head. I have clothes. I have food in the refrigerator. Um, you know, for those of you who know me, know that my life has been an adventure. Um, there have been wonderful highs. I was working at SpaceX for a billionaire genius. I was the only guy in the company that did my job. I was in a relationship with the love of my life from when I was a little boy, and then it all came crashing down. And I found myself living at Union Station in downtown LA. And it was during that period that I got the greatest lesson in gratitude, because a homeless woman offered me her coat. 
because on that cold October night, all I had on was shorts and a polo shirt. And everything I owned, I was wearing. And for her to give me a coat was just, I will never forget it. And from that point on, I learned how being grateful gives me more to be grateful for. The universe gives me more. I'm grateful for that. I get more. I'm grateful for that. It just goes on and on and on. And so I am absolutely thrilled to still be alive in this United States that just is nuts. There, it has been the strangest year in my life. Um, fires, viruses, unemployment, um, just anything bad that can happen seems to be happening, and it's just one month after the other. I still want to know what happened to the murder hornets. I didn't see those. <laughs> but I, I am truly blessed that I am not suffering financially. I pay for my car easily and effortlessly. I pay my rent. I have food. I have friends. I have family. I am so blessed. And so thank you for being here. Thank you, Gary. Wonderful. <laughs> And now we get to hear from Brenda Wells. How wonderful to <laughs> follow him. Hopefully, this um, Thanksgiving, embracing God is all there is, reigns supreme in all of our lives as the consistency that helps heal us. In this time of varied transitions, which requires refocusing to a new normal, I'm grateful for knowing that I am one with God. Daily, I affirm that the light of God surrounds me, the love of God enfolds me, the power of God protects me, and the presence of God watches over me. Alice Walker writes about giving daily thanks, that thank you is the best prayer that anyone could say. Thank you expresses extreme gratitude, humility, and understanding. I would like to give immense thanks to the NHCRS leadership and technicians who immediately reimagined and launched all of our programs on Zoom and Facebook Live. The daily meditations have just been amazing um, to help center me and keep me grounded. Our total curriculum here provides an amazing opportunity to bolster this community and provide wonderful experiences for all of us. I'm so grateful that I'm aligned with the transformative power of the universe. As a result of our Safer at Home uh, orders, I'm grateful for the gift of time, which has allowed me to be still and hear the voice of God, bringing right ideas into my life. I embrace gratitude as the cornerstone of becoming my better self. Being challenged again and again teaches me to honor the creator, actively demonstrating my appreciation through prayers. Mahatma Gandhi uh, states that prayer is not asking, it is a longing of the soul. It's a daily admission of one's weakness. It is better in prayer to have a heart without words than words without a heart. When I pray, I'm grateful to be able to relax and open up to receive divine direction on perfect, whole, complete in the heart of God. I'm perfect, whole, complete in the heart of God. I'm grateful for all of the life, movement, and experiences with family, friends, and loved ones. I'm grateful for all the tools that I use to provide guidance to develop absolute faith in God. So, on this Zoom's giving, <laughs> I, closed, I closed with words on gratitude by Charles Dickens. Reflect upon your present blessings, of which every man has plenty, not on your past 
misfortunes, of which all men have some. I am grateful. God is gracious. Thank you, Brenda. And now, Ann Montella. Hi, I'm Ann. Um, you know, I started coming to this church probably 15 years ago. And as soon as I walked in, it, I felt like I was coming home. I've done a lot of classes. I've done a lot of different things in here. But the, the thing that I have really stuck to is a routine that starts out with every morning I get up, I do my writing, I do a little meditation, then I go for my walk, and then I come home. And I've done that for, oh, maybe seven, eight years, you know, every day. So when all this uh, happened and we're stuck and we're stuck at home, I kept my routine. And I think that's what has really helped and saved me. I'm able to still get up every morning at six in the morning, do my writing, do my little meditating, and go for my walk. And when I'm on my walk, it's just around the neighborhood and maybe for an hour, or not an hour, a mile, a mile. It's not an hour, it's only a half hour. But I see God in everything. I see the flower, I see the tree, I see animals, and every day it's something different. Every day there's something I can be so grateful for. When we, this all started, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to be so bored. I'm going to be so bored. I don't work. I'm home alone. I can't see the kids. I can't see the grandkids. I can't see the great-grandkids. And then we started morning meditation right here from our church. Every morning, 8 o'clock in the morning, we get together. We go on Zoom. We don't care what we look like because who cares? Everybody's got their eyes shut. And for 15 solid minutes, we breathe in and we breathe out. And we breathe in love and we breathe out love. And I see every morning, six days a week, I see at least 20 to 25 people that I never would have seen except for the fact that we have Zoom and that we're in a, this lockdown condition. And so every morning I see the same people. And it's like, oh my gosh, there she is, there he is, there. You know what? And we get people from New York. We get people from Florida, from Portland. I mean, it's just, it's just a wonderful. So when I'm meditating and breathing in and breathing out and feeling God's love, I see in my mind, I see all these people that I meditate with. And you know what? They are the face of God. And I find them in my heart. And you're all a part of me because you're a face of God, you know? And I'm just so grateful and God is gracious. Thank you, Anne. And now we get to hear from someone who makes us make sure we are heard, but we rarely get to hear from him, <laughs> Adam Keshen. <laughs> Thank you, Reverend Mark. I was very caught off guard when you asked me to do this, but I am grateful you asked me to do this. Um, it made me think a bit about the first time I journaled and started practicing gratitude, and it took me back to the 10th grade. I was reading a book, and the book had told me to write things I was grateful for on, as a daily practice. And it was a very interesting experience because I was in the 10th grade. Everyone thinks they've got life figured out. Clearly, I needed to grow spiritually. So I would go under this tree at my school right before the first period, and I would journal. And it, in the beginning, it was hard. All I could really think of was material th things or a, a nice gesture. But I noticed after a few weeks, my, freak, my energy shifted, and the things I became grateful for were much more spiritual. And the inner chatter in my head started to shift from being critical to, to being grateful. And it was a very eye-opening experience, even if, for as a 10th grader. And, you know, over the years, it never fails. If, if 
I wish I'd been doing it for the last 25 years straight, but the times when I do decide to journal, the frequency shifts again, always. And then fast forward to here and now where we have expanded our consciousness and our gratitude so much to practice affirmations and being in, in nature, it really has, I've noticed the evolution. So um, yeah, I've, I've got the format for gratitude that you would ask for. And I wanted to share some of the things I was grateful for. Um, I'm grateful for spirit expressing in my life as good health, gainful employment, family and friends, a loving wife, nature and travels, a solid church home, an unwavering connection to spirit, and the opportunity to experience life. I am grateful for spirit expressing through me as inner peace, well-being, learning opportunities, being helpful, personal growth, love, compassion, empathy, kindness, and forgiveness. Peace, stillness, symbiosis with nature, and beauty. I am grateful for spirit expressing me, expressing through me as courage, free will, transcendence, embracing opportunity, and enjoying my community with spirit, and also allowing myself to just be. I am grateful and God is gracious. Thank you, thank you. Thank you to all of you for sharing. That was just wonderful that I got to just sit back and enjoy that. So I am ever so grateful. And so I just invite you now, as we move into prayer, to just focus on that energy of gratitude, to just sense that ability to appreciate the goodness within and around you. That is a God-given gift. So knowing that, let's turn our attention inward and move into prayer. Absolutely knowing that that one life of God is the life that expresses itself throughout creation. I absolutely know that that life is my life. It is the life of each and every being gathered for the service, every being everywhere. And knowing that that life of God is infinite, limitless in its goodness. I speak this word, first knowing and giving thanks for this absolute unchangeable nature of spirit, that it is birthless, deathless, and that through any change that might come our way that is unsettling, we always have this nature of God to fall back on, to call forth and to experience in a new way. And so for this, we give thanks. Grateful, grateful, truly grateful am I. a vibration of health and wholeness and well-being. That as we turn to that nature, it is the solution to every problem. It is the healing of every physical ailment. And we know that it is there as an energy that is there to heal this pandemic, every human ailment that is being faced right now. It is there being revealed and greater health and wholeness is coming forth for those who are not experiencing it in this moment. For this we give thanks. Grateful, grateful, truly grateful am I. And so knowing also that this 
vibration of spirit is a creative energy that is always seeking to give of itself unto itself uniquely and creatively through each of us. We know that it is in every being everywhere guiding us to those perfect right opportunities to share of our God-given talents, to be fulfilled and to be a blessing to others. For this, we give thanks. Grateful, grateful, truly grateful am I. And how good it is to know that this infinite goodness of God is boundless, limitless. It knows nothing of lack and limitation. And so wherever we might experience lack or limitation in our lives, we need only turn to it to be more than amply sourced and supplied with all forms of goodness and to be able to give back generously to life. For this we give thanks. And we know that the core nature of this one life is love. And that that vibration of love is boundless, limitless, unconditional, and it lies at the center of our being. And as we remember that truth, we expand in our ability to give and receive love for ourselves and for others, for activities, that that love is always seeking expression through us. That for this, we give thanks. Truly grateful am I. Grateful, grateful, truly blessed and duly grateful. And so knowing that that vibration of love is always for some greater good, let us set our own intentions for greater good and follow its impulse in silence. And so knowing that whatever these intentions may be, it is the impulse of spirit that we are feeling for greater knowingness and realization of itself. And so as we know that God is within these intentions, God's, God is in each of the situations that we would like to see greater good revealed in, we know that good is revealed. And so let us join together as we say, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth, and it's with a heart just overflowing with gratitude that I release this word, knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, amen.